guys, it's uh, the end of 2019, happy 2020, and today I'm going to be awarding the Laptop of the Century Award. Yeah, the best laptop ever made so far, that's right, it's a 16 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. I'm going to be giving you the quickest review I can give you, because I actually still use my 15 inch, so the 16 inch I'm going to go via my girlfriend's opinion of it. And I just want to say how much I love my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I can't even imagine a world without it like i literally had a 13 inch and it was so small and she loves it she loves 16 inches she was scared at first at first she was like oh it's too big i can't use this way too big but now when i talk to her she's like yes yeah, great the screen is gigantic she really loves the screen estate she was upgrading from a 13 inch and this is the base 16 inch that i got i tried all the versions out and i gotta say i loved the base model it's slightly quieter doesn't get as crazy as the max edition but yeah, she loves it, it's great. I'm gonna break down a little details for you because maybe that isn't good enough for you guys. You guys want more, more MacBook Pro stuff. So, is it heavy? You know, it feels about the same as a 15 inch, so I'm not gonna complain about that. It is, in my opinion, actually in fact, matter of fact, it's too big for travel. You can't rock these out on the bus, on a coach, on an airplane, it's just too big, it's too obnoxious. So you really want a 13 incher for that kind of stuff. But for home use, especially if you do not have an external display for home use, having a bigger screen is really nice. It's better than a 13 inch and you can still travel with it. It's just a bit heavy. Maybe get a rucksack, put it in there. It's not really over the shoulder. Um, it depends on how tall you are. If you're a little midget like me, then obviously you can't really carry it about. But if you're a gigantic six foot five basketball player, it's too small for you. So, you know, figure it out, try it yourself, but size-wise, I can't really complain too much about it. it. Looks so nice. Now the keyboard, everyone says the keyboard better. It doesn't matter if the keyboard's better. It doesn't matter if the keyboard's worse. All we care about is reliability. Now, I've had a 2019 for, you know, four months, something like that, and it hasn't broke. It's a miracle. The 2018, that one broke every single friggin' minute. But 2019 so far, touch wood, touch whatever I can. Not that kind of wood, touch whatever you can, and it's still working fine. So, mmm, mmm, it's hard for me to say. But the big thing is, maybe the 16 inch version is gonna be more reliable. I mean, they've changed out the switches, so hopefully it is more reliable, and that's what you care about. Regarding typing and feeling, my girlfriend loves it. Me personally, I love the old one, the butterfly keys. I like the less travel. I like how the keys are less wobbly. I like that kind of stuff, but it's divided. I don't care, to be honest, if I like it or not. You get used to it, but it's more about reliability. So if this one is more reliable, good for you, okay? So don't worry about that. Touch ID, exactly the same as before. Escape key, don't care about that. The touch bar, is still there. You're not gonna get rid of it. So yeah, it is what it is. I know some people out there say, Oi, you can disable the touch bar. You can have function keys back, but no, you can't. Try booting in Windows. What happens when you're starting up? The funk touch bar, the touch bar is blank. That means if you want to boot in safe mode Windows, you can't. You need to use an external keyboard for that. Thanks, Apple. Genius. At least the escape key now works. Anyway, yeah, and when it freezes, what happens? You can't use the friggin' function keys. This keyboard never stopped working before. So yeah, keyboard, touch bar, all that kind of stuff. It's still, it's amazing. Battery life. They've made it 20% higher than a 15 inch. Just amazing battery life. Of course, the processor, yeah, it uses up all the battery life if you use it. Just disable turbo boost and you'll have a really long battery life. And I've got to say, regarding battery, USB-C, amazing. You can get, I don't know where I'll put it, but you can get a battery pack, just plug in via USB-C. I can even charge this in my frigging car. USB to charge it. It charges really slowly, but it charges nonetheless. So if you lose, your proprietary power adapter, boom shakalaka, plug it in and you've got more battery. So this is the best laptop I gotta say for ports. I know it doesn't have an SD card, I know it doesn't have USB-A. It hurts me and all that stuff, but this USB-C Thunderbolt, it's so dynamic. Whenever I see a laptop now with the old ports, I go, huh, <laughs> get in the game, bro. How am I gonna plug in four eGPUs at the same time? You can't do that, you can only do it on this baby. So ports, keyboard, Trackpad, okay, I'm gonna complain about the trackpad. Trackpad, amazing on Mac OS, the best ever, palm rejection, beautiful. But as soon as you switch over to Windows, Bootcamp, Parallels, you can get away with it because that's a virtual machine. But as soon as you switch over to Bootcamp to get the good drivers, what happens? 
As soon as you put your palm here, it starts clicking all over the place. It's got no palm rejection. So you really need one of these external keyboards. They work really well. You just put it over the touch bar. Look at that modified MacBook Pro with amazing keyboard. And this guy works in Windows. Get yourself a mouse and you're happy, but just no Windows Boot Camp, not so good. Speakers, they made it better. It used to be great. Now it's even better. If you've got an older system, it's gonna be amazing. Gonna blow your mind. There is one issue though, and it still happens on this, happens on everything I use. You guys, maybe 99% of you won't experience this, so don't worry about it. But if you stress your system out, I live in Australia, okay? So if I don't have my IC running and it's summer right now. I know it's winter for all of you people maybe out there in the world. Right now it's summer. We're getting temperatures of 39 degrees centigrade. So if I turn my AC off, my AC's over there. If I turn it off and I have just the window open with the heat coming in and I try doing anything intensive on my 15 inch or my 16 inch, what happens? Here you go. Just trying to do some coding. Gaps in Intel Power Gadget. It can't even read the processor. Right now the frequency is going 1.4. What I'm trying to do is a bit of coding. And if I leave the computer alone, it's going to start to recover. But let's see the temperature. My computer will throttle down, lower than base clock. It happens all the time. It's just because I'm in Australia, really hot weathers. Can't complain too much about that. The fans go crazy on both systems. Obviously, the fans on the 16 inch are slightly, well, a lot louder than the 15 inch. Forget about that. But the T2 becomes a bit mental when it gets a bit hot. And what that means is the sound will start cutting out, the touch bar will start becoming unresponsive. So just, you just get an AC if you have temperatures and my room temperature at the moment, let's see, it is this. I don't know if you can see it. It's around, to be honest, I don't think this works. I got this from a store. It's always had that temperature, but when it gets hot, yeah, you can't really use it, T2. So if you're in warm weather, you need airflow. Airflow will fix it, but if you're in an office with warm weather coming in, it's not gonna go. That's my little rant. Over with that, the screen, larger, it's nicer. I do still experience blurriness here and there, but it's not as savage as what the internet makes out it is. I know they're calling it screen ghosting. Screen ghosting is when a friggin' image is burnt into the screen. They're just talking about blurriness over there. Yeah, if you're gonna peek at it, oh, I can't, I don't notice it. I need glasses though, so maybe you guys won't notice it, but it seems to work okay. Performance, the CPU to be honest is about the same as my old one. One thing interesting is if you do get the spec'd up i9, the 2.4 gigahertz base, you will get more performance out of it. That one, I've seen scores in Simbench R20 of up to 3,500, 3,500. This guy here, the most I get out of it, the 15 inch is 3,200. This guy, well my old, i9 version of this guy, that guy will get around two, 3,250. The i7 gets around 2,600. You won't notice any difference whatsoever, trust me. I've done testing everything, Unreal Engine, all, Unity, all these kind of amazing applications. And when we're shooting, we're getting 380 on the left and 300. It's all over the place, to be honest. It's, the i9 is pulling in more watts of power. We're getting 22 to 26 watts on the i7 whereas the i9 is pulling in 28 to 35 watts of power. So perhaps because the i9 is needing more watts, it leaves less watts to the GPU. And they run about the same. I've even had the i7 beat out the i9 and it launches applications faster than the i9. So don't worry too much about CPU. Where it will make a difference is if you're doing something heavy. For example, if you're compiling some code. So even though the i7 launched the application faster, compiling actual like code and shaders, the i9 is demonstrably right there. You can see it around 10 to 20% faster than the i7. The i9 will be 20% faster than the i7. If you're exporting some videos, the i9 will be 20% better than the, the i7 because it has two extra cores. It helps out, that's how it scales. But don't get too upset about it. Personally, I like the i7 because it's cooler and quieter and 99% of your usage is gonna be exactly the same. GPU wise, okay, you can get a bit obsessive and you can get the 5500M, eight gigabytes. I ended up with the 5300 because that guy was amazing. It is around 20% slower than the maxed out GPU. It is. All right, these are both side by side. Let's go. Animations away. You can see that frame rate wise, who's gonna get first? Boom, boom. So the 5300 is ever so slightly slower 
on rendering out this animation than the 5,500. Only when you're doing something intensive, but if you're just using standard stuff, you will not notice a difference. All you'll notice is that the max edition, the fans go crazier, louder, slightly louder, and they ramp up more noisier most of the time, whereas the base model is a bit calmer and quieter. So I do recommend the base model over the i9 and plus, you know, another thing, I initially got the max out model, well, max out 32 gigabytes, amazing two terabyte hard drive i9. And then I switched over to this one because my girlfriend said she'd rather keep the $2,000 and spend it on shoes instead. Versace. Oh, Versace. Oh, Versace. So if you guys are in that mentality of spending stuff on shoes, you have $2,000 extra dollars to get the base model or get that $2,000 and buy a friggin' Mac Pro. Mac Pro amazingness. Good money. Man, that Mac Pro looks sexy, isn't it? A bit expensive for me. I am getting one. I'm gonna try my will as hard as I can not to keep it. Because I love, I love having a portable. I don't know how the hell I'm meant to carry a Mac Pro, but you get 2,000 extra dollars to spend, Australian dollars, to spend on a Mac Pro system. So how have I covered it all? I've covered the GPU, CPU, speakers, microphone. Okay, they say it's better. It is slightly better, but no, it won't make a difference. You need an external microphone, an external microphone, some high quality stuff. Yo, I'm amazing. You need a proper microphone if you want some good stuff. And this is the 15 inch right now. This is the 15 inch. We are dropping you the smooth sounds, the sounds of our voices. And this, this one right here is the 16 inch. And is how, right. how does it sound? You're tuning in to Ash and Nora's smooth sounds at seven. It's good that they've highlighted it because the fans have reacted and said, yeah, it's good. So maybe they'll continue to improve it. Microphone's better. The screen is bigger, not brighter. It's about the same. Yeah, you're with Catalina. Catalina's great for security, but just be careful because some applications will not work in Catalina. Old stuff, but you know, getting with a program. You have to update one day in your life and macOS will nag you. There's always that banner telling you to update, use iCloud, all that kind of stuff. So just get with a program. What else is there to say? The webcam, I always tape my webcams up. You guys should tape your webcams up too because people can see what you're doing. Even Mark Zuckerberg, the king of spying on you, he covers his webcam because he's scared of getting spied on. So just know people are looking at you with your webcam. Don't take it from me. Take it from, was it the, the CIA or FBI dudes? The FBI dudes, they cover their webcams too. Just letting you guys know, cover your webcams. And it's 720p, it's rubbish, don't use it. What else do I need to say about this machine? Okay, so I've had some questions. Yo, Ash, is the RAM faster when you get the 32 gigabytes RAM because on the 16 gigabytes you won't get dual channel memory. No, you get dual channel memory no matter what configuration you get. 16 inches is amazing, goes up to 64 gigabytes RAM. So this dual channel in both, the RAM is exactly the same speed. I did also do some tests for the SSD, the 5, 12 gigabytes SSD versus the two terabyte SSD. I found that the two terabyte SSD wrote 100 megabytes a second faster than the 5, 12 gigabyte SSD. However, the 512 gigabytes SSD read 100 megabytes a second faster than a two terabyte SSD. So it evens out. So this is a two terabyte and this one is 512. Other things you might care about. All right, at maximum charging, the charging is around 10 extra watts because they've increased the amount of wattage in the power adapter. So 10 extra watts, that's 0.01 kilowatt hours eight yet kilowatt years. That's around 15 extra Australian dollars over here a year. So it's gonna be costing you a mint to run compared to the 15 inch. Obviously the 13 inch will be cheaper on the electricity. Everyone forgets. They're not all solar powered. It's not free. Let's reduce our carbon footprint. Otherwise the hipsters will be coming for you. Other things, warranty and service, get Apple Care Plus my friends. You need it for the system if any thing breaks on these laptops, any minor component breaks, they pretty much will replace the whole laptop, have a backup solution. If any issues happen with the T2, the CPU, the SSD, you've lost all your data. If one component breaks, pretty much, Apple say they do not guarantee they can recover your data and because all of your data is encrypted via the thankful T2 security chip, you have lost your data, so make sure you back the hell up of everything that you get and get Apple Care, protect yourself for three years, get into the Gumtree eBay game or hand me down game, 
because in two and a half years time, when you've got about six months left of Apple Care, you wanna start listing your MacBook Pro for sale, sell it on eBay with Apple Care to some guy that is willing to take the risk and it will sell for more expensive. And if they damage it and return it back to you, you can get it replaced via Apple Care Plus. It covers accidental damage. And if they steal it, you get your money back because you're protected over PayPal and all that kind of nonsense. So yeah, get Apple Care Plus and get the mentality of selling your MacBook Pro in about two and a half years time because that's the perfect amount to upgrade your system. Service and warranty, Apple have been good. They've been great. They're not like amazing like Dell. Dell do this, well, not saying Dell is amazing, but Dell have this amazing service where they will come out to your office and they will fix whatever your system is on the spot. Whereas with Apple, you give it to them, friendly customer service, all that stuff, but it take about a week or two to repair your system. So just be aware of that. You, when it gets, when it gets damaged, when, not if, when, when it gets damaged, you will be out of your MacBook Pro for about a week or two. Hopefully it will be damaged at least once only once in the three year term period that Apple Care Plus is covered for, but make sure you get Apple Care Plus because everything is soldered together. If one component breaks, they pretty much replace everything. And yeah, I've been using this MacBook Pro for a good, almost a month now. My girlfriend, like she says, she loves the 16 inches. She's really happy about it. She can even play games on it. The fan does ramp up whenever you play games, but she likes white noise, so she likes that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a great system. Probably the best laptop of the year. I'm giving it right now. This guy is gonna win. It's gonna win a medal. Laptop of the, what, do we have a medal over here? One sec. So guys, that was my laptop of the year. What is your laptop of the year? Are you gonna get in the Mac Pro or the MacBook Pro? Do you like 16 inches or are you waiting for 14 inches? Lots of options out there in the world. Hope you guys enjoyed the show.